Greetings fellow dice rollers, my name is Chuck. In this video, we're going to cover basic steps on how to set up Foundry for the first time, as well as give a couple of extra tips at the end. We hope this video helps you get set up quickly and improves your Foundry experience. Thanks for joining us here on Dice Edge. For this tutorial, we will be using Foundry version 11. If you're installing a different version of Foundry, your experience may vary slightly. The first section you'll be greeted with after launching a Foundry for the first time is the license activation screen. To find your license, open your browser of choice, head to foundryvtt.com, log in if not already, select your profile, select purchased licenses, select copy. Then on Foundry, paste in the code select Submit Key. Read through the license agreement if you wish, select Agree. You are now prompted with allowing usage of data sharing. You can select either Allow or Decline based on your preference. Now we are greeted with the primary setup screen of Foundry. At the top you'll see that this is divided into three major sections, Game Worlds, Game Systems, and Add-on Modules. Before we dive into these sections, First, we're going to head over to our configuration screen that is showing a yellow notice icon. This screen has a list of options that can be set up. However, for now, we're going to focus on the first two. We want to set up an administrator password. This ensures that we protect this setup screen from being accessed by our players. Personally, I use a simple short pin. The second option is the user data path. This is an important section and is the location Foundry will use to host your world data and any other assets you wish to add to Foundry. You can leave this path as the default. However, I recommend to update this path to an easier location that you can manage. I will create a folder directly on my C drive that I can place this data into. Once finished, select Save Configuration. If you updated the data path, you will see another prompt. Select Yes. Foundry will notify you that it needs to restart for the changes to take effect. Go ahead and close out of Foundry and relaunch it. From now on, when accessing Foundry, you will be prompted for the administrator password in order to access the setup screen. Go ahead and enter the password we just set up to continue. Now we will set up the core components of Foundry, starting with Game Systems. Select Install System. Use the search bar to search for your system. Select Install next to the system you wish to install. You'll notice that it installs in the background and automatically navigates you to Game Worlds. We can tab back to Game Systems to see the installed system. With the system installed, now we can set up a Game World. Tab over to Game Worlds. Select Create World. We will only need to update two sections to get started. Go ahead and give your world a title, and also select the game system we just installed from the dropdown. You may update the other settings as well. However, you can always come back to edit these at any time after creation. When finished, select Create World. The final section is Add-on Modules. Modules are used to add functionality to your chosen system that's not normally present within Foundry. We will cover installing and using modules in a later video. Now we can tab back over to Game Worlds and select the play button on the world we just created to launch our world. From here, you are greeted with the player sign-on page. Game Master will be the only option for user selection on world creation. Select Game Master, leave the password blank, click Join Game Session. At this point, Foundry is set up and ready for use. I have just a couple extra tips that you may find useful as you build out your world. First, data for Foundry is stored locally on the PC. As we saw earlier, the configuration screen contains the path to the local data storage. Let's go ahead and navigate to our data folder. As a Windows user, you can also right-click Foundry in the taskbar and select Browse User Data. From here, open the folder called Data. This is where we will store any assets such as pictures, tokens, music, etc. If in the future you ever need to move the data folder or move any assets within the data folder, it becomes a large hassle. 
With this in mind, it's a good idea to have a plan for how you would like to organize your data. Personally, I keep three base folders within the data folder for my setup. Assets for tokens, battle maps, cards, and any other assets I may get from another creator. Images for any handouts, portraits, and maps. And finally, sounds for music, sound effects, and narrations. The second tip for Foundry is that you do not have to use the installed Foundry browser. Instead, you can use any browser you wish. To do this, you can simply launch Foundry as normal. Instead of signing in, minimize the window, open your browser of choice, in the address bar, navigate to localhost colon 30,000. Note, if you configured a different port in setup, you will want to use that port instead of 30,000. Hit enter. Now you can sign in as normal and run Foundry. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one.